FM. Radio has never been better. What is up? Good morning, good afternoon, good day, good night. Good day to you. And good day to you. This is the movie show. On your favorite RSPS? We are we are session, right? <laughs> if that makes any sense. You're like, we are yeah, oh, there's no way to fix that. Okay, we are, we are. This is Session Ryan. This is us. And we are going to be doing a review of an MCU film. On the movie show. On the movie show. On Active FM. <laughs> right now. This is it. Like we are doing it. Okay, so here we go. Put up your quality, pump up your sound, and, make, and, and make this full screen. Yes. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 came out um, quite a while ago, actually, already. Yes. They were just waiting for me. <laughs> Ryan has finally watched the movie and now we can talk about it. Yeah, I watched it Yay! with my family. Did they enjoy it, Ryan? Uh, Joshua cried. My older son. He cried. <laughs> it's quite an emotional... It is quite it an was, emotional ride. It was very good. I think it's because, like... Yeah, animal yeah. cruelty, like, hits hard, you know? What has been the best films that I've said I've done? Well, not yeah that that we've reviewed, like ever. Well, in the last like couple shows. Now all of the films that we've reviewed, Tetris was good because uh, Tetris. Tetris was good. No, because this film, like like it it blew my mind. Honestly, this 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 movie, I felt like was an MCU movie. So honestly, in my personal opinion, after Endgame, not including Captain uh, Marvel. But after Endgame, I felt like we no longer had MCU films. Like they said they were MCU films, but they weren't. The quality, the standard, like everything just like went whack with the MCU uh, films. So you're talking about the junk? Like, like, but not even that, like even the CG, right? Like, like I remember watching Doctor Strange, the, what is it? The second or the third one? The second one. I think it's the second one. Whatever one just came out. Second one. And I remember the, the beginning of the movie, I was just like, the CG looks so bad. Like, like, isn't this MC? Like, even the even the quality of the CG. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they've been trying to pump out too many films too quickly with all of their series. But this MCU film felt like the old MCU films. And you know what's sad about it? James Gunn is obviously the director of this film. He was fired, and then he was rehired by the MCU. They tried to get Taika Waititi to direct. And I'm so glad they did not do that because his last... Been... Love and Thunder was horrible. Yeah. And I do believe he was a big part to blame in it. Mm. Like, he did such a good job with Ragnarok and then Love and Thunder just went over, like, way overboard. Um, but now James Gunn is no longer an MCU person. No, he has a... moved to DC. Mm. So... Hope he does DC justice. <laughs> that was nice, right? Thank you, thank was, you. was that intentional, or did that just like come out and then you were like, "Wait, what right. are you doing?" <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I must, I, I yeah. do, I accredit this film to James Gunn. What a freaking great story! It was very good. What great visual effects! Mm -hmm. Like some of the char oh. even the character developments, like and the fact that there's so because if you think about it, like all the other MCU films was normally one character, so it was Captain America. I mean, literally, mm. it was named like Captain America, Iron Man, mm. Thor, like Black Panther. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like it was yeah. all like it's one character based, and then like we'd have like the Avengers come together. But even when the Avengers came together, like the character development wasn't the greatest. Within that, it was more just like. This is the story of them all coming together. Whereas Guardians of the Galaxy is about a whole bunch of people. And yet they do the character development so well. Like you literally, you can relate and, and, and understand. And like, like, it's not like the Drax, for example. You don't feel like he's a supporting character. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like he's as much a main character as Peter Quill is. Yeah. Like, and that's not easy to mm -hmm. do. That uh, To get a group... Like well, they were all kind of in in their own lane. Yes, uh, you know, being the front, like the main main character. Mm. So we had main characters, main characters, protagonists. Yeah, it wasn't just one protagonist. Mm. It was so great. It was it was funny. Mm. But yeah, the for me the visual effects, I, I I was I was absolutely like some of the stuff. I was just like wow. 
I guess uh, it's and, and obviously you had the story to go along with it. Uh, it, it was a bit down, you know, this, I mean, it wasn't like they had, I mean, okay, there was a villain they had to defeat, but I felt like the main storyline was obviously around Rocket and getting him like back to life again. That's yeah. why they had to defeat the villain Yeah. to get Rocket, you know. It was actually also clever what they did because like Rocket. <laughs> what did you think of Rocket before this? He was just like another character, like one of these like really great, awesome, you know. Okay, when I first watched, because what I did was mm. I rewatched volume one and volume two in preparation for volume three. Mm. So when I first watched Guardians, like my first initial reaction when the first Guardians came out, I was just like, what are they doing? Because at that stage, we, we only had like the Captain Americas and Iron Man and like a talking raccoon was mm. not Marvel. So it was very like... What is going on here? Then, like, obviously, by the time Volume 2 came out, we kind of were like, oh, okay, this is, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Then Endgame happened, and you, like, connected with Gamora because, you know, she was with Thanos. And then, But then re-watching it, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, honestly, before, I wouldn't have put them in, like, my top MCU films. Definitely top MCU films. Like, even the humor. The humor mm. is so... It's yeah. so good. It's so entertaining. Mm. And re-watching Guardians, I liked Rockets. Like, I connected yeah. with him. So when I watched this film, because of the previous two films, like, yeah, it wasn't just like this this raccoon coming out of nowhere. Like, like I actually did connect with him. Yeah. But what was crazy for me is that Rockets was, like, unconscious for most of this film. Yeah. But the way they got you to connect with mm. him was through flashbacks, which is so smart. Like... Mm. It's it's so clever because like he he technically was not in the story for most of the film, but they showed you how important a character he actually was or yeah. is in the whole Guardian story. So that was that was also very yeah. very well done. Yeah, looking yeah. at looking at most of the shots, uh, the thing that that I was very curious about was how how they filmed a lot of the stuff because. You like there's a lot of shots that they did where you almost felt like, like it could only be done virtually unless they did some really really crazy, crazy uh, camera techniques um, and stuff like that. But then obviously within research, uh, look looking at how they did it. So usually they would use a lot of um, motion capture stuff, which you would imagine, mm. which we already know, like uh, James James Gunn's brother. Uh, he's not only a character, but he also does sort of like the 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 placeholder for for Raccoon. So you sort of think maybe he, you know, how, but then like the size, like how do you? I mean, you, you, I, I I'd often see him in photos like I crouched he, on yeah, his yeah, on yeah, his he was knees. Crouching, but how do you? Know, how does that help with motion capture? And if you look at this entire film, they didn't use any of the motion capture. Actually, what what they did is they shot a lot of reference scenes. So, for example, like there was one of the the fight scenes in that almost like corridor, that like digital corridor. That was part. so cool. And uh, so they first shot that with like guys, like guys doing exactly those same maneuvers type of thing. And then that was a reference to uh, the, the hand animators to go and animate uh, each character, which I mean to to hand animate. That's it's a lot of work. Mm. Okay, if there's any like uh, 3D animators out there, you know, you sit there, and a minute t can take you easily like a whole day just perfecting it, getting you know, getting it realistic enough. It takes a, 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 a it's a lot of work. All right, nothing was automated, which is what a lot of like the the digital film industry has come to. They they they've really started working on a lot of uh, automation because obviously it helps. Yeah, speed when you got automation, up, yeah. because then instead of hand animating it, you you kind of get someone to go and sit in their uh, well to put on a, a suit, a motion capture suit, go into studio, uh, let them you know roll out the whole scene, do their lines. They can even motion motion capture, they get their face capture, see the expressions, and sort of just copy you know create keyframes out of out of what they capture. Uh, but not to this film. They did it automated. And what helps is that doing the hand animation fill, fill, uh, fills in a lot of the... So like what I said with, with James... James Gun Shame, I don't know his name. What is his name? The brother. Yeah. Something Gun. You're Something Gun. If you're watching this... I actually, I do have you the are cast the man. list here. Sean. Sean. That's right. <laughs> I knew that. Sean. 
All right, uh, which helps now him not only being on his knees, but helps to fulfill uh, that transition from from a human uh, sort of body and you know the way that a, a human body moves to to how like a raccoon would move and how its its body, how its physics yeah. would work. But not only that, but uh, it helps with a lot of emotion acting. So like you see, especially like like the the uh, a lot of the animals. Like especially when they had a lot of close-ups, yeah. like you would see the 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 um the eyebrows, eyebrows, right? Yeah, you'd see it like <laughs> quivering. You'd see ah, oh, like like it would they would catch like hand animate the emotion so 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 well, and that already, I mean, that's a lot of work. Mm. That yeah. is a heck of a it is a lot of work of a lot of work. So, but quite interestingly enough, so I mean, w- with all the shooting that they would have had done, so. Uh, for example, <clears throat> you can imagine there's there's the scene that they did where uh, it's a flashback of Rocket's past where they're like in that cage. Mm. Like on the sound stage, they literally just had this, like actors would do the whole performance and they would just record it. And then from that, they would send it off to the hand animators and they would create that scene. And kind of, I mean, oh, it's crazy. No, this film is amazing. And Honestly. Then on, and then on top of that, like now you think, okay, but not everybody is is digital characters. You get the the the, the real life characters. So live action and digital scenes. So they would shoot the live action with placeholders. So I know that there were a lot of times where where a Chris Pratt Chris Pratt um, interacted with Rocket, and they would almost have the, this like doll, <laughs> this like weird fairy doll type of thing. And then obviously they would then have to paint that out. So what they're doing painting out. Is and and I know that there is uh, a lot of features of the uh, a lot of the, the VFX software today where they allow you to kind of just paint over edges, and then it tracks from frame to frame. But imagine if you have to cut out uh, unwanted objects within that scene, uh, every picture. Mm. So you don't have just one picture yeah. that you got to cut up because at the end of the day, a video is moving pictures. pictures yeah. So in every in every uh, frame, you have to keep cutting out that same. So they would paint out whatever's not needed there. And then uh, they would obviously 3D scan a lot of the realistic sets. And then um, they would, the hand, the, 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 the hand animated characters, they would then uh, sort of fill that into the live action shots. So, I mean, for example, I loved the transition from baby rocket to the older rocket. Mm. Like it's a seamless transition. Mm. It's, it, it's not like you see a fade because obviously there's like the face sort of changes you know the fur gets like kind of older the yeah. color changes and also the back the, the, the you know the location of younger rocket and older rocket changes but the transition like if you think of how i mean if i gave you like blender or like maya and i'd say i want you to do that like, how do you do that how do you transition i mean i suppose you'd be like oh i don't know the software's got a, a there's not a button that you just say <laughs> seamless you know, transition. Seamless transition from, uh, th- and then you can not... like toggle it up or down. Yes. Like, how seamless do you want it? A fifty-eight percent or like one hundred and three? There's no chat GPT in this <laughs> within the software. So, like, ju- just looking at the amount of work mm. that was done, I loved the the fight scenes. Mm. And you know when they um, when they arrived at uh, Orgocorp like the music that they used and like there was this feeling of this like wide angle mm. you, you mm. know that yes. distortion I'm talking yes, about yes. and some of the shots that ah uh, I was just like what is this what is this like ah yeah. uh, it was just it was amazing it was the the see. MCU film we needed yeah. cuz we've been traumatized by everything yeah. since Endgame so James Gunn what are you going to do in DC I want to see I want to see. I'm interested. I actually am also more interested now in DC mm. films just mm. because um, James Gunn has gotten involved. What film did he do in DC? There was one that he did, wasn't it? He's, he, I know he's like taken over. So he's did like he in a... with, uh, what I feel, Spider-Man or not Spider-Man, Spider-Man, listen to me. Spider-Man Superman is... Superman. I think he might have... James Gunn. Suicide Squad. Oh, they, oh yeah. Suicide that's right. Squad. Like, yes. We've never watched that film. I think it is a bit of a scary film to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, uh, yeah, no. But we could, I don't know. Anyway, maybe he'll continue Suicide Squad or maybe they'll give him something, something cool. The, the only thing is he does very well with the, the, the humor. Mm. 
uh, side of things. Mm. Um, and even like the group, the groups, because like suicide is also a group. It makes it's not sense just with Suicide uh, Squad. Yeah, yeah it, it actually does. And make like, sense. there's even a Scooby Doo film, which also makes sense because Scooby Doo's do got well. the same. Like, it's all this. Like, he works well with groups of yeah. characters working together and telling that story. But the other thing that's also crazy. So it's not just the the whole CG element of the film. This film also sets the record for the most makeup appliances used in a single film. Wow. So it has more than... This is insane. It's got more than 23,000 prosthetics used across 1,000 characters. 1,000 characters. Like, what the hell? How big is your... Like, but you... Mm. They go to that planet and... Like, I respect mm. them. They don't just, like, opt for CG, you know? Like, that, that whole planet was, you could see it, was prosthetic makeup. And, yeah. you know, it's really... And obviously, like, even Gomorrah herself is prosthetic makeup. Yeah. Nebula, it's, it's... Nebula was crazy. Drax, even. I don't know if you saw Nebula's eyes, you would think was, um, was uh, contacts. Her eyes were CG'd black. If you look in the behind-the-scenes footage, she, she has her normal eyes. She has her normal eyes. That's crazy. That CG artist who ever did all that tracking, <laughs> thumbs up. In fact, you know what? For you, CG artist of the year, there was probably a couple of you, but. Because wow. also, like Mantis with her, um, what are they called? Her, f- yes. her, her, what are they? And her eyes are also. Yeah, her eyes are also, also weird. And they're That's bigger. Empty. And aren't her eyes also slightly probably. bigger? So yeah. They've done the, the Alice in Wonderland thing, you mm. know, with. Uh, with the queen's, the, the queen's head, the queen's yeah. head, and different shots and angles, and yeah, yeah. No, this Woo. this movie was was really really good mm. from an emotional perspective. It is quite a heavy mm. film. It like it's it's quite a it's a very mm. heavy film. And what's sad is mm. it's like the end of the Guardians of the Galaxies as we know it. Yeah. So like for me when watching it, because I had gone back and rewatched the previous two, I'd really connected with the team, the characters, the storyline. And so now you like know this is the end and I hate endings. I really, yeah. I'm like, oh, cause now it's Especially like, when they end like this, it's finished. You're just like, like oh. if it was a rubbish film, it would be like, oh, well, I guess no, 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 we don't, rubbish films don't <laughs> count as part of we hate endings. So in other words, they went out well. Yeah. But really the good. only thing I don't like about the film was that they've set it up for an, the new Guardians of the Galaxy mm. and I'm just like guys don't do that Guardians mm. was cool let's leave it you know even I was worried about this one because obviously it's in our post endgame um, era and it's like they're gonna stuff it up they're gonna mess it up they're gonna do what they did to all the other yeah. films and they didn't not James Gunn yeah but mm. now they the, like I'm just like mm. I don't even know if I want to watch then if they had to bring a Guardians 4 I don't know if they would but I don't even I don't even I don't I don't think I'd want to watch it. I think they should just keep it there. The problem is they've opened it up. Yeah, the return of the land, the, uh, what is his name? Lord. Adam, no. Oh, wait, he's part of. Chris Chris Pratt's character. Oh, Peter Quill, Peter Quill. No, uh, Star-Lord. Star-Lord. They said the Star-Lord will return. It's like, what? My goodness. Mm. Why? <laughs> I was watching an interview with Chris Pratt and apparently this was the one and only film that they actually uh, kept a, a F word. Yeah. It's the first one. All Marvel. the other times he said he tried and then this one they actually kept it in. It was the first. It was a shocker. <laughs> their first. <laughs> we were all like, ah. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But I, oh, and for me also, the way they ended it with the first song that they started Guardians. I don't know if you picked uh, that up. I didn't pick that up. I was just like, oh my goodness. This is, you know, when you're, you're just like, it comes full circle. Like they literally yeah. finished the circle perfectly. Yeah, no, it was oh, very. Yeah, they did. You are right. Yeah. And especially the music that they used yeah. in this but film. I know like so many people said that this film, it, it felt like what, what MCU used to give us. Like this, it felt like one of those movies. Mm. The new MCU films, yeah, I, I, I personally don't know. I feel like Endgame, they should have just like, like taken a hint from the name. The Endgame and finished it off there. Well, we've always said that we need uh, movie production companies to stop making superhero films. Like we've had enough now. Except this was good. Yeah. You know how we were like, we don't need any more superhero yeah. films. This one, I, yeah. I accept this one. Like mm. this one, they, they, did, they did it right. Mm. They, 
But yeah, for me, the MCU would be perfect if it was the MCU minus Captain Marvel up until Endgame and then just add Guardians of the Galaxy. But I... I think Captain Marvel was just uh, oh yeah we need to oh yeah we need to put ah uh, we need to do this. They didn't filler, need hey. to though. Mm. They really didn't. It's like otherwise people don't know where she comes from. They didn't even need to put her in the her movie. Origin. What did she do, Ryan? What did she, she do? She destroyed uh, Thanos' ship. Remember, she came in and because there was that. Uh, what was? Yeah, it? I remember. I remember. Rain, hell, rain, whatever, something. But still, it. right? Still, they could have figured something mm. else out. Mm. Yeah, I suppose they could have. They could have. Anyway, someone needed a job. Some, ah. some director was. I'm not gonna say they were bored because I don't know who the director was. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some really hectic stuff going on there. Yeah. That they had to give uh, Captain Marvel. Maybe she needed some practice, or maybe they. I don't know. It was an opportunity. No, I'm just glad. Yeah. You know what? I'm glad that they, because I was, I was shocked when I read up that James had actually been fired. And then even Dave Batista was like, Mm-mm. I think he was prepared to get out of the contract. As in, he, he like, he was not going to go ahead with Guardians if James uh, wasn't directing it. Um, they, the Marvel approached Taika and said, will you direct? And he said no. And then, um, smart move. then they, they rehired, um, J, they rehired James Gunn. But imagine if they hadn't. <laughs> This movie would have been terrible. I can imagine that conversation between the producers, you know, one guy sitting on the other side and they're like, nope, uh, what's his name? What? Taika. Yeah, Taika, right? Mm. Uh, boss, Taika said no. And he's like, ah. Oh. Okay, what are we going to do now, guys? Um, Should I? I still have James's number. Don't you want to just give him a call and ask him if he wants to like, just like mm. come in for... Swear word, swear word, swear word, swear word. <laughs> Get James on the phone. There we go. Say- like, yes. Thank you. They got James on the phone. Yeah, I know. But the, and then the fact that he's going to DC, mm. it just shows the MCU, shame on you. Shame on you, MCU. Yeah. Shouldn't have fired him. I mean, who's going to do uh, Star-Lord? I honestly have gotten to that point now where I don't need to watch the MCU films. Yeah. Like at one point it was like, no, you, we, I want to watch, like, I haven't watched Ant-Man. Mm. I didn't, did you watch Ant-Man? Yeah, I did. I haven't watched Ant-Man. And yeah, uh, Guardians I was excited for, mm. and now I'm just like, it's like uh, someone else directing Transformers. Yeah, same thing. It's exactly the same. I, I don't want to watch any other others, you know. Mm. Not no more Transformers. Not watching it. And there's a new one that's just come out. There's something Return beast. of the Beast. Return of the Beast. Yeah. I want to watch it because I, I saw the trailer and I was just like, ah, they look plastic. For me, Bumblebee messed me up with Transformers. And, that was the and yeah. That movie. I was just like, yeah, no. Yeah, they need to learn from Michael. But yeah, Guardians was very good. It was very very it was good. Great. I wish they'd ended it there. Are you? Are you? Ryan's probably happy they didn't. Gamora and Peter Quill. Are you happy they didn't get back together? Well, let's look at what happened. So if they had to get back together at the end. Uh, and it, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it just feels more solid the way they've just done it now. Like th- there was a hint of, you know, I bet we were fun. Yeah. And they weren't even facing each other. And then that, that was it. And she, <laughs> and she, and she on. carried on with the Ravengers and then that was it. End of story. Yeah. They had to end it. Yeah, they did have to end Otherwise, it. Otherwise, it probably would have felt like a sort of loose end. Maybe also they don't want Gamora in future ones. So they were mm. like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good film. It was a great film. Bradley Cooper did very well. Mm. He, he really, you felt that. And the crazy part is like, he's just voice acting, but he yeah. did such a good job. Very well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Even with uh, with Groot's character uh, in the behind the scenes, they used other people. I thought they would have used Vin Diesel. I think they'd pay for that. And y- y- you know, uh, when they did the reference shoots, like they made the actors like put on expressions as well, and like they used different act, like whatever replacement actors. Yeah. So Bradley Cooper didn't do um, Rocket either with the, with the. Oh, I don't know, Rocket. Or no, did he just no, do no, no. voice? No, he just did voice. Because remember, uh, yeah. Sean. Mm. Remember your name? You? Oh, yes, of course. He did Rockets. Sean, yeah. Sean Gunn mm. with the double N. 
Did it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was great. It was great. It was a good film. Mm. It was a... So, uh, honestly, I feel like it's the last good MCU film we'll probably ever get. Yes, probably. Yeah. So, um, it was good while it lasted. Glad they went out with... With a... Yeah. With, Not with the bag. With this film. I'm good. glad they went out with this yeah. film. And they separated well. Mm. Wasn't that sad? They just... Like, they were all yeah. off in their heroes in their own... And Drax was hilarious. Yes. I loved him in this film, though. Honestly... I, I very easily could put the Guardians of the Galaxy at my top of the MCU films. Yeah. I really could. Yeah, after I'm, after after this, I'm just like these these three films are good. Yeah. Because even I'm with you. last point, when we watched Avengers mm. Infinity War, right, and the Guardians and the Avengers met, I was on like if you could, I was on Team Avengers, right? You know, like oh yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm so not Team Avengers anymore. I'm yeah. so Team Guardians. Yeah. Like when I, because when I rewatched Guardians, I also watched Infinity mm. War and Endgame. Obviously, just mm. because you can't, it's part of the story. And I was just like, you know, you feel proud of your, you're mm. like, yeah, yeah, that, those are the Guardians guys. Those are the, felt like that. that that's my guy. Okay, so, 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 last, last question, Sashi. Mm. Who is your favorite MCU character? Mine's Thanos. Still Thanos. <laughs> Can I put the Guardians of the Galaxy as yeah. as a character? Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose you As have a collective to. group yeah. that makes up yeah. family. But then I'm going to put a point two to that question. Okay. Who's, Who's your favorite, favorite Guardians? Guardians? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's Rocket. And it's not because of this film. Like... In the first film, mm. even, like, he's just got this, like, oh, whatever. And didn't you realize, like, like, didn't you sort of, like, I never knew, like, Rocket always makes a plan, but I never knew that he was that smart mm. until this one. I was like, wait, hang on. Yeah. Rocket's a freaking genius. He is a freaking genius. He is, because yeah. he always gets out and all of that stuff. Yeah, I think, I think his humor just, just. Yeah. He's not, he's set. He's got a very dry sense of humor he does. and he's not even trying to be funny sometimes. It's just his reaction. He's very serious. That's like you you just laugh at him. He's a very and, yeah. He's actually a very solid character. He is a solid Dead character. Solid. Yeah. Uh, so end scene, alien abduction, Kevin Bacon shares all on the newspaper in the post credit scenes. That's you know why? You know why? To so so in the first Guardians, right? Yeah. They bring up Kevin Bacon uh-huh. as like Quil, Peter Quill's like like idol, so he's constant. And then there's the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, yes. where they go and they they actually bring him into Guardians of the Galaxy. So. And then yeah, yeah, that's that's a tight a nod mm. to to the holidays. I didn't watch the holiday special though, but I should watch it. I should go, I should go to watch it. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go watch it. Yes, but anyway, we will be back with Barbie next. I'm joking. <laughs> Ryan will not be here for that. The will be like an empty chair. Eyelids. Something to nod my head. That's it. But so we will be back. See you guys next week. Peace.